In July of 2024, the NREMT updated the cognitive exams for the advanced and paramedic levels. In this video, we're going to talk about those changes to better prepare you for your upcoming exam. Hey everyone, Sabrina here. I just want to make sure to clarify that this information is specific to AEMT and paramedic students. The EMT exam now has a number of additional types of exam questions that are covered later in this video. So if you're an EMT student, you can always go check out those. Otherwise, go check out one of our other videos regarding the EMT exam. All right, so the updated NREMT cognitive exam has a few changes that we will discuss in this video, but first let's talk quickly about the psychomotor exam. At the national level, there is no longer a psychomotor exam requirement. Now, this doesn't mean that you will no longer need to learn the skills that, that you will be performing in the field. You'll still be trained on those in class and have to prove competency with those skills. It just means that the NREMT is leaving it up to your state and program to decide, to decide on how skills testing will be performed. So here in Idaho, we still need to test students on the same skills that were traditionally tested during the NREMT psychomotor exam, but we no longer need to have an NREMT representative present during the testing. So realistically, nothing has changed in the state of Idaho, but it will be up to you to look to find out what that process looks for for your state specifically. There's one other thing that I want to cover that is specific to the advanced EMT level exam that you may not be aware of. As you prepare to take your EMT exam, you may have read about adaptive exams because it, the EMT exam is just that, an adaptive exam. Basically, that means your exam length is determined by how well or poorly you are doing on the exam. This is not the case for the advanced exam like it is for all the other uh, NREMT exams. So the EMR, the EMT, and the paramedic exam are all going to be uh, that adaptive exam, whereas the AEMT is a linear exam. So all students will get the same number of questions. Uh, that that number is currently 135 as of the shooting of this video. Uh, the paramedic exam is an adaptive exam, like I said, similar to the EMT exam, uh, but that will have a length of 110 to 150 items currently. If you have not taken the time to look at this information, uh, at the information on cognitive exams on the NREMT website, I strongly suggest you go do so. There's a lot of good information to help you come in for those exams as prepared as you can possibly be. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the new cognitive exams and those different updates. So like I said, there are two major changes that have been made that you will need to be aware of when going to take the exam. If you haven't done so, like I said, I really encourage you, go on the NREMT website, click the new AEMT and paramedic examinations link you'll find there. The link has a ton of information as well as some example items that you can go through. So go check this out, go check that out after this video so you know how this is all going to look when you actually go to take the exam. So talking about the new exam, the first edition is going to be the clinical judgment domain. Traditionally, the cognitive exam was made up of five different content domains. First being airway, respiration, and ventilation. Second being cardiology and respiration. Third is trauma. Fourth, med OBGYN and fifth was EMS operations. Now with this new exam, they have added a new domain focused on the test taker's clinical judgment. As to the shooting of this video, the clinical judgment domain will take up 31 to 35% of the exam for advanced students and 34 to 38% for paramedic students. The NREMT defines that clinical judgment section of the exam as the complete process of clinical reasoning that is the thought process a clinician uses to evaluate and sort out a development and clinical decision making. That is the influence of that thought process. Clinical judgment includes investigating, experimenting, synthesizing, critical thinking, decision making, and problem solving to employ a sensible solution for a given medical situation. In addition to this, the exam will also be looking at the candidate's leadership and communication skills. The NREMT defines leadership as an EMS practitioner's ability to demonstrate the proper management and guidance of patient needs and the EMS setting, while using limited resources to improve patient outcomes 
and to ensure a safe scene. This is done by using knowledge, skills, and acquired competencies. Communication is defined as an EMS practitioner's ability to convey or exchange germane information with peer EMS worker, fellow first responders, and hospital personnel, such as nurses and doctors. This is done by using knowledge, skills, and acquired competencies. Communication, likewise, is the ability to communicate to the patient, family, or other citizen individuals found at the EMS setting. Now, this can all sound pretty confusing, but the NREMTE breaks down what it is looking for into these different steps. Recognize cues, analyze cues, define a hypothesis, generate solutions, take action, and then finally, evaluation. You will be given clinical judgment questions that are broken down into three different phases, the en route phase, scene phase, and post scene phase. Each phase will have a scenario given to the candidate with information about the call and the specific phase of the scenario. A question or questions will be given for that specific scenario. As questions are answered, the question will move to the next phase. As you can see here from the sample items found on the NREMT website, the en route phase gives standard information such as the call and patient type, scene type, weather conditions, and transport times. There are also some additional notes given. Question items are given involving that information. Moving on to the scene phase, information is given about what responders encounter when they arrive, as well as some objective information on the patient, such as vital signs and history. Again, you'll get questions about the information found in that section. Finally, the scenario moves to the post scene, where information on previous treatments are given, as well as the patient's response to those treatments. As with the previous sections, you will get additional questions to answer. Like I said, this can seem overwhelming, but these are all essentially the things we do on calls every day. The exam is just looking to see you do that in an exam format. We always recommend students invest in a test prep program to help them practice the format of the NREMT exam before going to take it. If you have any good tips or tricks that you've used to help you prepare for your exam, leave them in the comments to help out future students. We would love to hear them. All right, so the next major change is the addition of a number of different item types or question types that will be given during the examination. As you may have noticed, the clinical judgment scenarios will util utilize all of these different question types. At the beginning of the examination, candidates will be provided with a tutorial containing specific instructions on how to respond to each type of item. These instructions will also be available throughout the examination via the help function. The first item is multiple choice. You'll select one response out of four possible options. This is a traditional question format and one that you will definitely be familiar with. Next is the multiple response. You will need to select two or three correct responses out of five or six possible options. It is important to note that you will need to get all of your responses correct to get that question correct. So it's asking for you to answer with three different options and only two of the three you select are correct, you will get that question wrong. There will also be drag and drop questions where you will position several presented options into certain categories, classifications, or other identifiers as specified in the item instructions. Next is the build list. You must position several presented options into the order specified in the item instructions. And finally, we have the options box. Here, you must classify, categorize, or identify several options presented in a table based on certain specified criteria. In addition to the new item types, there are also graphical items. You will use information provided in graphical form to answer the item. Examples include charts, ECG strips, images, pictures, things of that nature. Graphics may be included in any of the item types. When you took your EMT exam, you may have only had multiple choice questions to deal with. So this may be a pretty large departure from your last NREMT exam. Again, we really recommend a test prep program to help you practice these new item types. We offer access to the Jones and Bartlett program through our website, uh, but there are other programs our students have had good success with, uh, such as pocket prep, medic tests, and EMT prep. Uh, we don't have any sort of relationship with those companies. Like I said, these are just uh, test preps that our students have reported having good success with. Uh, these are all paid programs. 
but in my opinion, the cost of a test prep program uh, and the exam once is cheaper than the stress and cost of having to retake the exam if you don't pass the first time around. Well, we hope that information in this video will be helpful for you to go out and pass your exam the first try. Take the time to study and prepare, then go in and crush that exam. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on social media. Please subscribe to the channel and we will see you on the next one.